hello from quarantine land. A few weeks ago, Springer released over 400 books for free due to Corona, including about 40 books in math, 40 in physics, and 40 in computer science. And we can download all of them in about 10 lines of Python. So let's do it. I already went ahead and got all of them, including the engineering ones, which made me throw up a little bit. <laughs> and uh, for some reason, I can only get to the proper Springer page from this website here, uh, our bloggers, because uh, this is the, the, the Springer search interface, apparently, and uh, I cannot get it to show just uh, the books in the Corona package. So uh, there are two relevant links. The first one is this one which uh, takes us to that uh, page precisely uh, with just the, the English book uh, books. And uh, the syntax is not that um, not that bad actually. So we just need to to uh, include the content type as book. otherwise we'll also get articles. And then we also need to, to include the, the, the language unless we also want books in German. And then the name of the package. So there are two packages that are uh, that, that have free books that I have found. One is this one, the the, the Corona one, and then there's also the open access uh, the the open access package. And I don't know if this one is a superset of the other one, but whatever, both uh, are nice. So in the top right corner of the window, there's a. Uh, a button that we can click to download the list of all the of all the books, and we will use and we will read that CSV from Python to get the the URLs that that we need. So, if we look at the at the CSV, it's just a list of all the books, uh, and uh, it has the the titles, the 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 authors, and most importantly, the URL. So let's read that from Python. Oh, I already have that here. Nope. I want to start from scratch. Yeah, here we can include the name for interpreter. Mm. So that we can run the Python as an executable directly. And uh, we're going to need two modules, the, the CSV module to parse the CSV and the, the URL lib uh, module. The URL, uh, lib, URL lib request module. And uh, from URL lib request, we need URL retrieve, I think. The URL retrieve function to download uh, the contents of a, of a URL, which takes should take a URL and a name, but we'll find out soon enough. And um, now we now the first step is to open the name of the of the is to open the CSV file, which is called search results. And uh, if we print that out to the console, I wonder what what will happen. Yeah, it's just a it's a it's a file object or something. Then we need to tell Python to parse it. So um, we just uh, call the reader function, which takes a delimiter parameter and the, 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 the file, the actual file. And then what does that look like? Nope. Yeah, and that, that that's a reader object or something. Uh, but what we want is a list because I want to iterate through the through the whole thing and uh, skip the first the first column, which is just a header. So now, if we print that out, this is uh, these are the contents of the CSV, and uh, from the CSV, we want uh, just three columns. We want the the title column, which is the, the first one, and um, we need it to record the indices for that, the author author index. And uh, we also wanted the title index. Actually, the title should come first. And then we'll also want the, the URL index. 
So the author is, uh, so this is column zero. And then the author is at column zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven, eight. And the URL is at uh, uh, index, uh, at column index eight. And so for instance, if now we uh, pass this thing here and pass, pass the title index to the row, we are going to get the contents just of that row for uh, just of that column. Uh, if we pass the, the index of the column, rather, we're going to get the, the contents of that column for every row. And so we can start building our URL live request. The name is simply going to be the concatenation of the of the title and the author. Like that. And I think we need to sanitize it a little bit. So, well, first let's make it lowercase. And then I think there's a URL that's bad, uh, that has a character that's no good for for Unix, which is it's a slash, I think. So let's replace that with an underscore. And that's going to be the name of the file. Now the most important part is the URL. And the URL was at this column here. And we need to tokenize it. That is to, to uh, split that string because that's going to be a string. Let me show you. That's going to be a string. And um, this uh, each URL that, that, that we get from the CSV file, it's not the actual URL that we need in, in order to download the, the file because that URL takes us to this page. But uh, we have, so we have this U URL here and the actual URL that we want is this one. Now, luckily for us, from this URL, we can compute this U URL quite easily. And it's just, it's simply this number here, the, this string, uh, this string of three characters, percentage, percentage two and def, and then the, this other string here. So. Uh, one way in which we can do it is by taking the, the URL string and uh, tokenizing it into or splitting it into a list of, uh, of substrings by the slash character. So now if we print our tokens, is that it? Oh yeah, it was it wasn't strip. It was split. So what we want is the the second to last uh, substring and the, the the last substring in order in order to form our URL. So in the final URL, we are gonna have this coming first, and then. The second to last token, uh, second to last token, followed by the by this string, and then the the last token, and that should give us what we want. So I want to. Uh, I wonder if that works. Yeah. Now I'm pretty sure we are downloading all the files in the in the CSV. Which has the Corona Corona books, the books in the Corona package. Yep, yep. The the books are starting to to be downloaded. So that's it. Uh, that concludes the tutorial part of this video. Now let's talk a little bit about the books that come in the package. Uh, many of them are re really good. Or, well, at least some of them are re really good. The, the others I haven't read yet. Understanding analysis is um, especially is particularly one of my favorites. And uh, this book has one good thing about it and one bad thing about it. The good thing about it is that, oh my gosh, it takes forever to load. Oh yeah, it's being downloaded. Okay, let's stop this. 
Yeah, so uh, it ran for a little while, our tiny script, and it already got two books. And it started downloading the third. Uh, the whole thing is, let me see. The whole thing for me was about uh, all 407 books. Mm, after deleting a few ones, actually. So all 400. Um, so I kept 397 books. And that is over 7 billion, about 7 billion uh, bytes. And yeah, so it takes... I don't know, a few hours to, to download. But anyways, going back to understanding analysis. So books like this are... So this book is particularly nice. The the the, the good thing about this book is that um, for, every ex, for every explanation that it has, that explanation is good. The, the bad thing about the book is that it's missing about half of the explanations. So this was the book that helped me understand than or be, uh, uh, help me helped me begin to understand the uh, convergence, aka limits. Because before this book, I had tried for years and years and years to understand them. I first saw them when I was fifteen, I think, and it wasn't until I was twenty-eight or so that I really began understanding them, thanks in part to this book. So let me see. I think it's theorem. 1.2.6 yeah yeah so this this uh tiny innocent result here says that two real numbers a and b are equal if and only if for every real number epsilon falls that the, the, the so two real numbers are equal if and only if they're epsilon equal for every epsilon and that might seem like a like an obvious result uh, if you understand it if you don't don't, don't understand it, the statement it Sounds like mama jumbo, but basically it's saying that if we have the real line, and I'm just gonna draw with my keyboard, uh, which is gonna look horrible. So if this is the real line R, okay, that's supposed to be an R, and um, we have uh, a number here. Let's call it A. Okay, it is impossible to to, to draw with the keyboard. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's say that this number is is uh, okay. Let's say that this number here is a, and this number here is b. If they are, and and we are gonna draw uh, an open uh, an open set around them. If they are, if they happen to be in the same epsilon open set for every open set. So if if they share all, if they are in all the same open sets, then they they are equal. That is what this result is saying. And uh, it turns out that the definition of convergence is a nice generalization of this result. So let's open up our favorite uh, LaTeX renderer and um, try to see why that is. So first, let's import our numbers. Let x, let's say that let x and r be a real number. And uh, let y in R be our real number. What that result is saying is that for every for yeah no, no, no. now the real numbers x and uh, y. So x is equal. To y. This statement, the statement x is equal to y, is equivalent. To the statement that the distance between that um, that x and y are in uh, share all open sets, no matter no matter how how small. And um, and an equivalent an equivalent way of saying that is that their distance their distance uh, they are epsilon close for every epsilon and arithmetically uh, the way we can write it using the Euclidean metric of R is that is saying that their absolute value is less than epsilon. Now, we haven't said what epsilon is, 
So the statement is not quite so simple. We need to include a quantifier and um, quantifiers always complicate things. And now we say that for every so that x that the statement x is equal to y is equivalent to the is logically equivalent to the statement that for every positive epsilon, x and y are epsilon close to each other. Now let's see. So uh, yeah, and the cool thing about the book is that it includes a, it includes a proof that I can actually understand. So I mean, state simply stating this result doesn't do anything for me unless I can understand the proof. And the book the, the, does a good job at that. So now let's see what the definition of convergence is. And see how it uh, li quite literally generalizes the, this result. Oh, and by the way, whenever I'm, I'm trying to, to remember something, one of the tricks that I use is that um, I give it a stupid name. So the stupid name that I've given this result is the fundamental theorem of uh, equality in R or of R equality, if you will. And now I never forget about this result because it has a stupid name. So let's look at the definition of uh, convergence. AKA, so convergence of sequences, AKA limits of sequences. So let's copy pasta that thingy, which I have it here, I think. So I'm looking for quality in NAR. And let's make the, let's make the two match more closely. So here, oh, I indented that, I indented this, and I indented that. Yeah, and then one of the things that took me so long to learn was that in math, quantifiers have a scope. And very often the scope is trivial, so you don't need to specify the scope of the quantifiers. But it still helps, uh, so in this case it is trivial, uh, but it still helps for me to always delimit the scope of the quantifiers, which kind of makes math mathematical statements look, look like source code. Uh, and perhaps that's not that far off. I don't know. Yep. Okay. So now the, the statements above and, uh, and below are exactly the same, but we want to begin to change this uh, the, the the one below to and the, turn it into the definition of convergence. So let's begin by renaming our thing. So let's say we have a, a function, a sequence f, and a sequence is of course not an element of the real numbers, but uh, but a sequence is a map from the natural numbers to the real numbers. So this is an, a real valued sequence or or a, or an R valued sequence, if you will. And then uh, we wanna we want this sequence to, to converge to a real number, but let's rename it L for limit. So we have a let f be uh, let f uh, a function from n to r be an R valued sequence. Let r, which is gonna be its limit, be a real number. Now. Uh, the sequence f, not equals to, but converges to y, to l, if and only if something happens. And then uh, if for every epsilon, if for every positive epsilon, the distance between f and the limit is less than epsilon. Now, from the fact that f is a sequence and not a number, we can subtract the real number l from the sequence. So we actually need it to evaluate the sequence at a at a point x or at an index. Well, at a point index at a point slash index i, 
and uh, compare those two because the sequence being a function only returns a real number after we evaluate it at a point in its domain. So yeah, and then to get to the full definition of, converge of convergence, aka limits, we need to add some more stuff here. But that is, those are just te te technical details that um, arise from the fact that now we are not dealing with a, a real number x, but with a sequence f. But that's really roughly, so this um, analogy right here, or parallel here, is what made me understand that convergence, aka limits, are just uh, uh, a generalization of equality. And not just a generalization of equality, but a really reasonable generalization of equality. So this really kicked things off for me when, when it comes to understanding analysis. So yeah, I guess this book kind of does uh, live up to its name. Now, the bad thing about the book, and this is true of most math t textbooks actually, but I'm, I'm just going to point, point it out for this one because I really like this one, is that half of the, is that every, so the good thing is that every result that it has is good, is it's, it's explained well, but the bad thing is that half of the results are m m missing, so, or half of the explanations are missing. So, uh, here we have a very important result. I think this is the Heine, Heine Borel theorem. Let me check. I need Borel. So the, the uh, subset of the close and balance. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I said, so here the book says that uh, a subset of R is compact if and only if. So the, the, the statement that, that a subset of R is compact is equivalent to the statement that it is close and valid. And the book has uh, a, the, a proof in one direction. So yeah, you assume K is compact and then you have to deduce the, that is closed and bounded, uh, but the converse is missing. So the converse is where you assume that, um, that the subset is closed and bounded, and then you derive that it is compact. Now, <coughs> I tried for weeks to figure this out, and I couldn't. I couldn't f figure out the proof of, proof of the converse, and surely enough, if I'm buying a textbook, it's because I cannot figure out this stuff on my own. So having a textbook leaving out very important results like, like Heine Borel theorem as exercises kind of makes you feel like I'm going to the doctor and paying the doctor and the doctor is just telling me just tells me to go cure cure myself or that curing myself is left as an exercise for me which I mean if I could cure myself I wouldn't be going to the doctor in the first place so if I could prove these uh, results about the uh, basic analysis on my own I wouldn't be reading a textbook <laughs> in the first place so anyways that's that I hope you, you you enjoyed this video. Let let me know uh, the things that, that that you liked and didn't like, so that uh, hopefully f future ones can be less uh, bad. And uh, thanks a lot for watching.